Okay, uh, thank you all for coming here and attending the ArcGIS for Server Security, the advanced session. My name is Gregory Ponto. I work in Esri Professional Services as a security architect, and I'll go ahead and let Jeff uh, introduce himself here. My name is Jeff Smith. I'm a product engineer uh, for Server and Portal on the development team in Redlands. So our goal today is to kind of go beyond the the how to configure um, the products and some of the basic capabilities to, to focus on best practices for an on-premise web GIS. We'll be talking about the ArcGIS server and the portal, and we'll discuss some additional advanced security options you may want to take advantage of. Now, we, uh, we, we have an expectation that uh, if you're here, you do have some pre-existing knowledge of ArcGIS server and portal. Um, there are uh, introductory sessions uh, available today, not on security, those are done, um, but there's administration uh, courses or, or technical workshops later on today available too. So, you know, if you're not fully familiar with these things, it's still fine, um, but you may want to take advantage of some of those, um, those introductory administration courses because we're not going to go into every detail on how to administer the products. So security is, is, a, is important, it's, a, it's real, right? The threats are real. Um, it doesn't take much of a Google search or whatever to find uh, examples where breaches have occurred. Um, you know, the reality is breaches have occurred with, cu with customer technologies that Esri hosts as well, or Esri has as well. Um, this is a, a, a growing challenge because uh, the, the, the simplicity of, um, of, of, avail of availing GIS or data to users, has, it's just become so simple and so easy, but, and, and they have so much more power than they used to. And, and that power can lead to accidental, um, hopefully not intentional, but accidental uh, leaks, uh, people sharing uh, services or data with unintended uh, sources, sometimes with everyone not realizing that, that, that uh, they've shared data with the world. Um, so we, we'll talk about how to help mitigate that. And I mean, there's also, there's also real attackers. It's not science fiction, um, especially if you have uh, publicly facing servers or portals. Um, that means that there are likely uh, bots, at the very least, who are scanning your systems looking for vulnerabilities. So we do have to, be, have to seriously take these into consideration. We subscribe here to a defense in depth concept, which basically means that one lock is not enough. Um, if you have just a, like a firewall on your, on your server, uh, that's, gonna, that's gonna help mitigate a network threat, but it's not gonna stop an application level threat. So we have to think about um, how to secure the network, how to secure the operating system, how to secure the application itself. Uh, sometimes this is called IAAS, PAAS, and SAAS. Um, that's basically meaning Secure the infrastructure, secure the platform, secure the application. Uh, we, we essentially have to create um, a, a functional fortress. Uh, the most secure platform is one that's off, but it's not very usable. So we have to, uh, we have to build walls that uh, protect our systems, but, but also find the balance that enables our users you know, to actually do their jobs. It, it's, it's a challenge, it's a balance. One of the things we've done in the 10.4 release, uh, one of the major focuses of that release for ArcGIS Server and Portal was to help address some of the items that you have no way yourself to address. Uh, things like updating uh, underlying libraries and components that we utilize, which over time, vulnerabilities are discovered. There is no perfect software, and probably next year I'm gonna be coming back to you saying, hey, you know, use 10.5 because there's, there's new vulnerabilities that have been discovered. That's the reality of the world we live in. Every software company is releasing patches more rapidly um, because attackers and researchers are finding more, uh, more threats and more vulnerabilities. Um, so so I, would, I would encourage as, as one uh, checkbox item to look towards doing is moving your infrastructure to 10.4 uh, if you can. I realize that that can be a challenge, but it's gonna help. Uh, that's gonna be a, a very uh, immediate gain in your security profile. You don't actually have to configure anything to get those benefits. So we'll be talking about the web GIS on premise. We will be talking about portal and ArcGIS server, um, both kind of separately and the, through the concept of federation. Um, Data store is also a product, the capability of the web GIS. It's out of, out of the scope of, of this session though. 
So the first thing we'll go into is, is how to secure the ArcGIS server. There's several best practices we're going to be talking about. Um, things like, should you use encryption? Yes. Um, enabling that. Disabling what we call the services directory, which, uh, which is a, sort of a developer endpoint. Um, really shouldn't be enabled in production. Uh, file permissions and, um, and talking about some recommendations that you, if you can, take advantage of those you might want to consider, like disabling the primary site administrator account. And we'll close out um, through all these sessions with a script that, uh, I'll plug Jeff here, but he wrote it. Um, it's a scan server and portal script, and uh, I'll, I'll kind of mention it several times, but if you really take nothing else away from this session, remember that um, all these best practices can be can be uh, discovered and scanned through a script that's available at 10.4, it actually is um, backwards, somewhat backwards compatible uh, to, uh, to older versions of our products. You can run this, this script, which you'll see in a moment. Um, so I'll talk about that as well. But uh, we'll, many of the uh, configuration settings that we'll talk, be talking about are going to be through sort of the advanced administrative endpoint of both ArcGIS server and portal called the administrator or portal administrator directory. It's kind of, it's kind of this, um, you know, I, I expect that most everybody here has probably seen this at some point, may not have used it very much, uh, or maybe used it extensively, uh, but these configuration modifications and settings are all pretty much all housed in here. And it's all at, uh, if you go to this, basically the slash admin endpoint of your ArcGIS server, you're gonna find this, this directory. So the first uh, thing we talk about is that it's, it is important to enable HTTPS. At 10.4, it's enabled by default, so if you're deploying that, um, you're kind of already done there. We also recommend, if you can, disabling HTTP. Uh, that, that is a, kind of a self-imposed uh, challenge, though. I realize with legacy applications, that may not be, uh, may not be an option right now. Um, but the, the, the issue with HTTP, beyond the fact that it, it doesn't provide encryption, um, is that the, the world of, of, of agents, um, browsers, and clients, and phones um, are moving towards the direction of disabling functionality over HTTP. So actually moving towards a more secure um, delivery method for your data, HTTPS, uh, will Will, will, will provide you actually more capabilities. It used to be that it was harder to use, but it's actually gonna be harder and harder to stay on HTTP. So uh, I, would, I would suggest that if you can, attempt to, um, to, to remove HTTP from your, your environments. It kind of forces you to move in, in the right direction. The next, um, the next recommendation is to disable the services directory. So the services directory is something that, you know, we at Esri really was the, was the only um, easy to use vehicle uh, prior to the, to the emergence of Portal that we had for um, advertising our services uh, to, our cust to our users. But it actually doesn't provide any functional capability um, particularly the, the, the HTML uh, rendering. Uh, it's, it's nice, it's handy, a lot of people use it, but if you disable it, uh, it doesn't actually stop your applications from functioning because all your applications don't, don't call the HTTP endpoint, they call a JSON variant of this endpoint. Um, I've worked with, all the customers I've worked with um, I've suggested disabling this. There's a lot of apprehension. Um, it's never broken anything. Uh, what does happen, though, is people say, uh, you know, my users are really used to this, and I understand that that is, a, that is maybe a reason you want to enable it. Um, but if, you, if you're in an organization that has, like, an information assur assurance officer or a security officer, you have to do scans, this endpoint lights up scanners like a Christmas tree. If you disable it, that you'll, you'll address, like, 95% of the scan findings. Um, because it is, a, it is a dev endpoint. It provides an attacker, as much as it provides your users a way to discover everything, it provides an attacker a way to discover all the endpoints and capabilities of your system. And particularly if you have a public facing system, I, I, I really can't iterate this enough. You, you really should disable this endpoint. Um, the reality is um, there, are, there are additional risks uh, even, even to having this enabled at a public facing endpoint. 
um, including denial of service. Uh, someone can potentially discover ways to, um, to compromise your system. You really don't want to, to give people like a blueprint of the bank vault. So disabling the services directory is, is a relatively easy change. It's just a checkbox. So it's, uh, it's a configuration modification of the REST handler uh, section in the administrator directory. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very easy two-way street. You disable it, you save it, and you, you know, it'll no longer render. Um, if, you, if it becomes a huge problem, you have lots of users that are really, uh, really into using it, you can turn it back on. Um, just understand that you're doing that. Uh, that comes at some, some risk. And I'll go ahead and uh, turn it over to Jeff for a demo on how to do that. All right, uh, just a uh, quick demo here showing how to disable the REST services directory. First of all, I'll go ahead and open right now. Mine is enabled. And as Greg described, it's, it's all visible in uh, HTML format. And I can click on any of these services and see all the operations supported by these services. Now, if I to change that, let me go into the server administrator directory. Log in as an administrator. And I'm going to go to system and handlers and rest and services directory. And as we saw on the slide previously, it's, it's very easy. Click edit. It's just a checkbox. I click uncheck it. I click save. And now, if I were to go back to the rest services directory, and I see, I get this pop-up indicating that the directory has been disabled. And this, while it, sh it indicates the directory has been disabled, as Greg described, this has no impact on the functionality of the services, uh, the underlying services behind it. This just takes away the, the, uh, the blueprint or the HTML access point for these services. Okay, thank you, Jeff. So, uh, let's see what happened here. Oh, there we go. Okay. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Is there a way that you can expose it to certain users? It's an on-off thing. On or off, yeah. Um, that, it's actually the second or third time I've had that, uh, heard that suggestion. So we're going to take that under advisement. Um, uh, I realize like, there are some users that really want it, and, um, and uh, disabling it might, might you know, be frustrating. Um, yeah, go ahead real quick. I usually use that red set point as a troubleshooting point. Uh, right. You can re-enable it, you know, temporarily. It's just not something you want to enable if you can avoid it in production, particularly for a public-facing site. If you're not public-facing, um, then your pool of attackers is far lower. Um, so then it's not as big of a problem. Um, I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't itself, you know, mean that your server is going to instantly be compromised. Um, but it definitely becomes an issue for, um, for compliance. Uh, compliance officers will scan it. They'll go... I'm going to shut this thing down because it has so many vulnerabilities. Um, and you disable it, and you know everything's back to you know at most low findings. So in my world, we have to do that. Uh, for I work with federal deployments, we have to do that in all federal deployments. Okay, so uh, cross-site, cross-site, uh, cross, sorry, cross-origin resource sharing is kind of a um, kind of a murky concept. Um, it had a rough early life cycle um, in kind of the the, you know, the Internet of Things, uh, it, is, it is the concept whereby a client browser makes a request to a web application, and that web application, or that client browser, then makes a subsequent request to a service. This is basically how all of your, your applications are currently working. Um, if you had an, if you had, if you have a JavaScript API application, if you had a Flex application, um, Silverlight application, that's that's how this is all happening. Um, now the the issue here is that uh, by default, all of these uh, the the Arctic server, I should say, will support any any application rendering its its uh, its content. It's it's open by default, basically. Um, that's not a that's not a, a like a cataclysmic problem. This is not like a super critical item, but if you want to take control of what uh, web applications are allowed to render your services, this is how you do it. Um, so you you're going to go into the the administrator directory under 
system handlers, REST services directory, and you can modify the allowed origins. So here you would supply all the web application um, uh, URIs, so HTTP and HTTPS, fully qualified domain name of all the applications that you intend your services to be used for. Now, if you have a much broader deployment, you're a public deployment or something like ArcGIS Online, you would just leave this as star. That would be, that would be okay. Um, but if you really want to take control of what applications are allowed to consume your services, this is how you do it. And this is a client side, this is a client side protection. So it's, it's not, you know, it's not a 18 foot wall. Um, it's an eight foot wall, but it can, um, it can help uh, reduce the, the over, and one thing you can do is actually help to redu reduce the overall load on your ArcGIS server from sources you just didn't expect. And I'll go ahead and uh, turn it over to Jeff to uh, take us through that. All right. Um, you got a quick question? Oh. Doesn't support wildcards. Sorry. Yeah, I know that makes it a more, more difficult thing to implement. Um, yeah, so if you have a broad group, it may not, may not be appropriate for everybody. All right. Um, to control that, we're going to go into, as, as we saw on the slide, uh, the server administrator directory under system. Handlers, this is the same place we went to for uh, enabling and disabling the services directory. It's uh, this under allowed origins right here. Now, uh, an easy example of where this type of request, this course request is used, is with ArcGIS Online consuming a feature service. So I'm gonna give a quick demo here. If I go out to ArcGIS.com, and I'm not even gonna sign in, I'm just gonna create a map. modify the map, and I'm going to add, I've got a feature service on my system, uh, this URL right here. I'm going to add the feature service. Now this may be an error you've seen before when you try to add, in, in particular, feature services to ArcGIS Online. The map itself draws, but this error pops up. It says editing. The Colorado, you know, seems to, appears to be on an internal network. Uh, it's not accessible and it's gonna disable editing. I mean, that's a, that's a generic error message that appears in, in different scenarios, but in this case, this is happening because ArcGIS Online or ArcGIS.com is trying to make a course request to access the feature service. That's mandatory in order to support editing of the feature service. That type of request is needed. Since in this case, uh, if we go back to my services, ArcGIS server services directory, the only allowed origins I'm allowing right now are from my own system. And so my, my server is saying, okay, I don't, I'm not going to support that, and, and we're not going to support cores. That doesn't impact the ability to be able to view the service, because ArcGIS.com or ArcGIS Online uses a different technique in order to actually uh, view the image right here, but I can't edit it. So if I go into the, back to the administrator directory and edit this, and all I'm going to do is add an HTTP www.arcgis.com. As we just said, um, with, in regards to your question, this does not support wildcards. So I have to act explicitly say the HTTP and then the, uh, the URL there. Click Save. Now if I go back to the same web map, and let's create a new map here. And we're going to modify it. And we're going to add the same exact feature service. I add the layer this time, it appears, and you'll notice the edit icon uh, appears in the corner. That means editing is allowed, and that's because, again, like I said, ArcGIS.com realizes that a course request is supported for uh, the ArcGIS server, and so editing is uh, enabled and allowed here. Okay, thank you, Jeff. Question. Yeah. So, like we're talking about with just going to ArcGIS.com, what if you had multiple ArcGIS Online organizations? Certain, I mean, yep. it, certainly, with It'd regards to. Right, like my my org dot maps my org dot maps dot arcs dot com would yeah. be an example of an entry that you'd put in there. And you like, put as many. You, know, you put yes. as many as you want. I, yes. I a, well, I've done 20, 20, 25, maybe like that. That works. Um, in, in some cases, it's not appropriate because you have to serve to so many clients. You don't even know all of them. Um, it, like I said, it, it's a, it's a. It's a, it's a protection, it's not the ultimate protection, it's one of many 
um, techniques you can use to, uh, to govern access to your systems, basically. So another thing we'll bring up here is just a, a basic, uh, basic requirement or a basic item that you want to want to think about is that, you know, we, we tend to think about web tier and, and web access as as the as the only vector that you know that people can access our services. And this is the idea that you know that's that's one important item to protect. But at the platform level, you also have to have to think about threats. Um, you know, you have. And you have uh, systems on your network. Um, I mean, everybody here uses a corporate network, almost certainly. And um, I can't sit here and tell you that there's no, there's, that's impossible for your corporate network to be compromised. In fact, it's 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 easier than you think. Um, a uh, uh, you know, an individual can open a bad email. Their system can become compromised. That system's now on your network. Someone might actually have control of it that you don't realize, and then they might be um, peripherally trying to access any open uh, files or services that are available. Um, that's why we suggest that the only account that has access to your install directory, config store, and server directories are uh, are the ArcGIS server account and um, any any administrative accounts that you might you might want. But really, all we need is the ArcGIS server account. Um, your IT department might need other accounts like agents and stuff to, to have access to this location, that's fine. What you don't want is everyone, and I see that from time to time. This is like open to everyone. Um, you know, that means that there's a potential uh, like side vector that uh, an attacker can use to, to, to crawl into your directories and access your data in ways you didn't expect. So another um, recommendation, though it is not a hardline requirement, um, or I shouldn't say, none of this is a requirement, but um, it's not a, uh, an absolute you know, item that you, wanna, you, you need to take care of, it's, it's just a recommendation, is to disable your primary site administrator account. Um, a lot of people create this account as site admin. Um, you know, I see some people nodding. That means I've already guessed the username, right? So now I only have to do is guess the password or, or, or try, to, try to brute force the password. Um, because that account doesn't lock, um, I can sit there all day, all night. I can run a bot and just bang away at that endpoint and try to guess that password, guess that password. Um, that's why we suggest, if you can, disable this account. If, if not, rotate the password periodically, 60 days, 90 days, something like that. Um, if, you're, if your site administrator password has been the same for the last two years, um, it's probably time to change it or consider disabling it. Now, you, if it's the only administrative account you have, it's not possible to disable that. That's a protection we put in the 10-4 to prevent people from um, locking themselves out of their of their system. So like I said, it's, it's appropriate in some cases, uh, not at all, but it does help um, provide some protection to your system. So uh, the thing I, I, I kind of reiterated a few times here is this is a, the tool that we released at 10-4 um, I'm, I'm really excited about it because we used to have to do all these checks manually and uh, you know big kudos to my colleague here Jeff his team helped write this uh, this tool can you can run on your ArcGIS server on your portal uh, and it will scan your system to determine if there are any uh, any you know, critical important or recommended best practices that you should look at addressing and it can be run you know it's not it can be automated it can be run daily, weekly, monthly. Um, the real value that it offers me, I work in managed services, so I mean, it's real to me, um, is that we, we have this, um, we always have this common problem, uh, especially with, with Portal, of users sharing content to, to, you know, to everyone, to basically the, the public internet, and not realizing that they've done that. Um, the scan tool will pick up on those. We used to have to manually crawl through all the services and figure those things out ourselves. That tool gave us back uh, a great deal of time. So um, I strongly recommend you know, looking into this, trying this out. Um, it's non-invasive. It runs very quickly. Um, and it can give you a nice report that can tell you, you know, what actions you might want to take. And I'll go ahead and turn it over to Jeff. He can give us a demo of that. Yeah. The uh, security script is in, um, installed in the ArcGIS server installation directory. So if I open up the Windows Explorer here, go to Program Files, and ArcGIS, Server, and scroll down to Tools, and Admin folder. Now there are a couple of uh, Python scripts in here. The one we're looking at here is this uh, server scan.py. 
and it can only be run from the uh, command line. So I need to go out to the command line right here, use Python. Now bear in mind, this is assuming, this is going to create a, an HTML uh, report in the same folder where this um, Python script resides. And so the user that runs the script needs to have write access to this folder. I've seen some scenarios where that's not the case and no reports generated. But it asks for three things, uh, the fully qualified domain name of the server, and the administrator username and password. So as Greg said, it's very quick. It's, it's already done. It found five items there. Let me exit out of here. And I'll open this up. Now it classifies, it sorts it based on severity. You're critical, you're important, you're recommended. The critical ones are ones that we really didn't feel there's any reason that uh, those vulnerabilities should exist. And it's something you should take a look at right away. Um, in this case, I, I, <clears throat> I've got standardized queries enabled or excuse me, disabled on this system. And that's something that is, it makes the system very vulnerable to potential SQL injection attacks. And uh, unless you absolutely need to disable standardized queries for one reason or another, this should always be um, enabled. <clears throat> but in this case, this is for an example to show you uh, some items on, the, on this report. And of course, the um, important items, uh, we've got a dynamic workspace enabled on an individual map service here. And we also have the REST services directory. I, <clears throat> after disabling it, I re-enabled it so it would appear on this report. Recommended. Again, as, uh, as Greg mentioned, this went through all the feature services and said, all right, well, this feature service, my Colorado feature service, has editing enabled, and it's accessible to everyone. So there's no way to track who's, who's making edits or who's changing or potentially deleting every single uh, item or, or all the data for that feature service. Uh, likewise, the PSA or the primary site administrator account uh, is enabled on this one and should be disabled. Now, our help documentation goes through and there are 12 different items that this security scan currently scans for. And this gives you details about each one, categorized again based on severity, uh, the critical ones right here, down to important and down to recommended. Oh, you, you can, can run it as you can administrator. Run it. The, the administrator account doesn't necessarily need to be the primary site administrator. It could be any administrator account. Yeah. Yeah. All right. OK. Thanks, Jeff. Um, Wrong one. Three, I think. There we go. So now we're going to shift gears to portal for ArcGIS. Oh, yeah, go ahead. It can be it can be run on the older versions though it's not been like tested all the way back to 10.2 so the results will be will require a little bit more investigation to determine it. you might basically you might get some false positives is what I'm saying um, which is actually quite common of any scanning tool um, yeah if you if you have it you can actually take it though from 10.4 and and run it on older. You need you'll have to yeah you'll have to install 10.4 to get it. <laughs> I don't, I don't think it's available as a no. download, no. no. OK, uh, so yeah, we'll, we'll move on to Portal for ArcGIS now. This is the, basically the similar set of best practices for Portal. There's a few additional items to consider with Portal. I mean, Portal has, at least in terms of sharing, more power, potentially more risk um, to your organization if you're not careful about adhering to best practices. So we're going to talk about. Uh, some of the things we already mentioned, like um, HTTPS and um, disabling directories. Um, we'll, we'll spend a bit of time on dealing with proxies. That's a component of Portal that presents uh, a very real risk if it's not managed carefully. And uh, we'll round out with the server scan um, script for Portal, which again is the one thing that you really should uh, consider uh, from this session because it's going to cover things not even in this session um, in addition to everything we've talked about. So. Um, with, with uh, Portal for ArcGIS, HTTPS is enabled, but we do suggest that you switch it to required. Uh, this is somewhat of a self-inflicted, um, some self potentially self-inflicted pain, um, but it's going to force you again and force your users and force your items to move towards HTTPS because I cannot guarantee, like we've already lost geolocation over HTTP if you use Chrome. I can't guarantee that um, you know that a year from now Chrome might disable file uploads 
um, over HTTP. So if you don't start aggressively moving towards HTTPS, um, you are likely to lose more and more functionality, and not just with our product, with everything. Uh, so it's it's a it's really important to start start moving in that direction. And the thing is, if you don't like the results, you can uncheck the box. It, you know, it's 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 a relatively easy uh, two-way street there. So it's at least worth uh, testing that out if you're not already in that heading that direction with Portal. Another thing we recommend, similar to the recommendation of ArcGIS Server, is to disable the sharing uh, directory. It, it really doesn't disable it, but it, it, it prevents the rendering of the HTML. And, um, and this, is, this is as much a compliance item as it is you know, about, again, not, not giving out the blueprint to the bank vault to everybody that walks in. Um, it's, best, it's much better to just do this. Um, the, it will not affect the functionality of your applications. I can say that with complete confidence because that's how ArcGIS Online does it. Um, there is no sharing endpoint available in ArcGIS Online. If you go to the sharing endpoint of any ArcGIS Online organization, you're going to see this. Um, but obviously, uh, you know, thousands and thousands of apps use ArcGIS Online every day, and they don't have any problem with this configuration. It's been like that for quite some time. Disabling the REST services directory, and I apologize, the screenshot's a little small. Um, but again, you'll, you guys can access these slides if you go to the info desk. These are all available at PDF, in PDF format or will be after the conference available. Uh, there's a setting called Disable Services Directory. You can set that to true. It's a JSON string, um, and that will, will, uh, will hide that, that HTML rendering of the services directory. So a, a big item that, uh, that I want to really talk about is is the threat of proxies. So Portal for ArcGIS comes with a proxy built in, and it is sometimes necessary to utilize this proxy. You don't likely realize it's happening, but it's sometimes necessary to utilize this proxy to support certain things like storing credentials in an item, um, supporting services that don't support cores. So um, a common one is OGC services. Now OGC services don't don't necessarily, they, they, may, uh, they, sh they may support cores, they may not support cores. The point is, Esri doesn't have control of those things. So this proxy can be used to basically trick your browser into thinking that requests that are coming from multiple origins are all actually coming from Portal. Portal actually goes out and grabs the content for you, kind of as this diagram is showing. So the client app goes to Portal for its item and Portal discovers that that item needs to come from a remote source that doesn't support cores. So Portal will go out and grab the item and bring it back to you as the client app. It can do the same thing to a back-end machine. That's, that's basically a good thing, um, although it is essentially a workaround to environments that don't support cores. And we'll talk a little bit more in a moment about how to, how to enable better support for cores. But the, the challenge with this, um, this technology is that it enables an attacker to do the same thing, but to sites you didn't expect. So it is possible for an attacker to use Portal, any Portal, especially if you have a public-facing Portal, this is really important. Um, an attacker can use Portal to launch attacks against remote sites, and they look like they're coming from you. Um, and, and this is not fantasy land, this is not science fiction. I've been involved in, uh, in cases where this has happened. Um, so it's, it's, it's something to, to, to seriously consider. Now, if you have, a, if you have a, a local portal or a portal that's not publicly accessible, um, you know, your threat pool is now just your local network. It's not to say that there's no threat there, but it's, um, it's, it's less, of a, less of a problem. But the point is also an attacker can use that same, um, that same proxy to hit a machine on your network that you didn't expect either, potentially exfiltrate information that you had no idea that they could get at. So it's, it's, it's really important to consider, um, consider controlling this. So within the, uh, within the security configuration of the admin directory, there is a, a property that you can set, allowed proxy host. Now this does support a wildcard. So you would basically enter here any uh, sites, any service endpoints, any item endpoints that you're referencing um, that, the, that your proxy, that the proxy might call so this might be, again, OGT services, or kind of the more common one is the case where you add an item to portal and you store credentials. So if you're hitting uh, internal or remote 
uh, site and you're storing credentials in, 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 in the item, that really means you're engaging the proxy. You would put the, at, at the you would put, for example, here, the, uh, the, the root of the domain um, of that remote source. And that would enable that proxy to keep functioning. Now, if you, if you don't have anything, if you, if you set this wrong, this is like a whitelist. So it's going to, it's going to block um, uh, un, un, non-whitelisted sites. So it, it, it can have a, an impact if this is not set correctly. And I realize this is this effort and this is kind of challenging, but that comes with the territory, especially of, um, of supporting a public-facing portal. Now again, if you don't have a public-facing portal, um, there's, the, the threat is significantly reduced. Um, but it, it, it's, uh, it's even worth looking into there. Because again, I cannot guarantee you that your network is 100% safe. Um, it is, it is uh, frighteningly easy for a, a client system on your network to be compromised. Um, you know, uh, a bad email can do it. Um, you know, a bad uh, USB drive can do it. So, um, you know, we, we have to be diligent about these things. But RGIS not um, the, you actually don't have to put Arches.com in there. Um, it would be if you were like using a premium service with Arches.com and you were, so you were storing a credential in an item. Uh, that's why we use that example there. I, I would love to be able to set this for you, but I don't know what your portal uses. Uh, that's why we can't, we can't set it for, for everybody. Um, so it does require some effort on your side to, to figure this out. Another item that we recommend is to disable the the, the create account capability uh, in Portal. So by default, Portal comes equipped with this, this really kind of nice, convenient way for, uh, for a user to create an account. It's also a very convenient way for an attacker to create an account and to get access to your Portal, and you didn't really expect that. And the, the, the vector that this follows is the, there's, a, there's a, another convenient feature in Portal where you can share with your organization. And uh, if you have this button enabled, then basically share with your organization can mean share with everyone. Because uh, someone can come in and create an account, you didn't realize they did that, and now they have access to anything shared with your organization. A much bigger deal, again, if you have a public facing portal, if you don't have a public facing portal, less of a concern, I guess, um, then your pool is really your local um, users. But uh, you know, this is another way for people to just eat up licenses that you didn't expect. So there's another sort of functional, functional reason why it's, it's worth disabling this. Now, uh, I got the question last time, um, does this mean we can't create new accounts? No. Um, if you use SAML, you can support automatic account creation. You can do, um, you can upload, there's a, there's, a, there's a script inside the portal tools directory where you can pre-create accounts. Um, you, can, you can create accounts in the administrator, in the portal home app. Um, so you can, as an administrator, predefine the accounts. Um, or if you, use, um, if you use integrated Windows authentication or PKI or whatever with your portal, um, those accounts can be created automatically as well. But see, that's nice. That's a better way to do it because those accounts are pre-authenticated. This is an unauthenticated um, a, uh, means to create accounts. So, so especially public-facing portals, we really don't want this enabled. Again, unless you want to solicit. Um, and some people do, I guess, if you want to sort of replicate Arches Online features and you want to solicit public, public uh, uh, accounts. So um, I mentioned the portal proxy and I kind of harp on it because it, it is a very real threat. Um, it's an, it's a, it's, and it's a feature that, that was there to, uh, to support services that didn't support cores. In a way, it's kind of, it was kind of a hack, right? Because we had we had all these browsers that didn't support cores properly, and we had the need to bring in you know, services and base maps from different sources and pull them together to create this great user experience. And that wouldn't work with, with legacy browsers, so, um, so that portal proxy had to be, had to be uh, created. Um, with 10.4, we've created another, um, another capability called trusted servers, which can help us um, tell the application to trust certain remote sources and use cores against those remote, remote sources. So it really moves us in the right place of sending the, the browser to pick up the web application from the portal and sending the browser or the client to get all the services 
from local or remote sources instead of, of this. So um, trusted servers allows us to move away from this kind of model. This right here is the proxy, by the way. So this is where the client browser is opening the web application and the, the portal, basically, is making a sideways call to the remote source and pulling the data back to the browser. We really don't want to do this if we can avoid it. So what you do is you populate this trusted servers list with as many servers as you have remote um, data sources. And then uh, it will instruct the application to, instead of doing this, do this. And there's other advantages to it. Um, if you have a secured ArcGIS server or a secured service endpoint that uses a, um, a third-party authentication method, which is like HTTP authentication or Windows authentication or maybe certificates or anything else, um, the, the, the portal is not going to be able to, to call over to those, those resources anyway. So um, this way, it, it, it moves us to having the browser, the client, make that call. And the browser is equipped with a card reader, so it can use a cat card or a smart card. Um, the browser is equipped with single sign-on, so it can use your Windows authentication. Um, it, it makes the experience all around better. It actually makes the experience faster, too. So this is one of the kind of unique and wonderful times or places where security actually makes the solution faster um, and more accessible as opposed to less accessible to your users. And with that, I'll go ahead and uh, turn it over to Jeff to give us a demo on that process. All right. Now, to, to demonstrate this, I want to use a WMS service that's secured with HTTP authentication. And what I will do first is give you an example. Let me log into my portal home application here. Uh, and all I'm going to do is create a map. And I want to add a layer from the web. In this case, it's going to be a WMS OGC web service. And the URL for one is right here. And before I add this, I'm going to open up a, I use, uh, this is in Firefox, I use something called Firebug to capture the network traffic going on behind the scenes. Because I'll tell you right now, this is, this is going to fail. This is not going to work. But I want to show you, demonstrate uh, what's going on here. So if I click Add Layer, I get the error message, OK, this failed. And you'll notice this red uh, line right here. And what you'll see at the beginning is it's, it's, a, it's a proxy request. It tried to use Portal's internal proxy to go out and access this WMS service. That failed because this service is secured. And the proxy has no way of passing credentials, the HTTP credentials, to access the service. So all it says, it returns a, a 502 bad gateway. But there's, no, there's nothing you can do at this point. That's always going to fail. And so what we need to do is tell Portal, OK, don't try to use your built-in proxy to access this. Uh, go ahead and, and make this a CORS request. Make it so the web browser accesses this WMS service directly. So let me hit, hit OK here, cancel this. And what we're going to do is click on home, <clears throat> excuse me, go back to my organization and edit settings. As we saw in the slides under security, We've got our trusted servers. So what I want to do is add server host name, and in this case, the port number as well, since I'm accessing it through a non-default port. Uh, right here is the trusted servers. I don't need the protocol in front of it, uh, just the, the host name and the, the port number, uh, if needed. And I click Add Server. Doesn't need to restart. I just click Save. <clears throat> now if I go back to Map, and let's go ahead and add the same, same layer. Again, it's a WMS OGC service. Copy the URL there. I will use the, the Firebug again, uh, once again, to capture the data. <clears throat> when I click Add Layer, OK, now it's, it's red right here, but it's red for a different reason. It says unauthorized 401. And, and in my browser, I'm being prompted to enter credentials. So this is great. What this means is my browser accessed the service directly. And now from the user's endpoint, they need to enter the credentials to access this secured service. <coughs> Click OK. And the service adds. You'll notice also 
looking down here, the URLs that were used to access this, the internal proxy or the proxy URL built into server is not being utilized any longer at this point to access this service. This is very valuable <coughs> in this situation for adding secured services, in particular with the uh, HTTP authentication or, or integrated Windows authentication or, or those type of scenarios like, uh, like Greg described. Thank you, Jeff. Um, okay, so to kind of round out these best practices, again, I'll refer to the, the portal scan script. There's a, a similar script that we have from server. It's also in portal. Again, at 10.4, it can be used to scan older portals. Um, if you use it at 10.4, you know, you can, you can, you'll get, well, the results will all be legitimate. If you scan older uh, products, you might get what I call false positives from time to time, so it might require a little more effort to just validate. Um, that's okay, uh, but again, this is going to help you identify uh, if you have you know, real potential risks in your environment um, and, and, and help you with, with guidance on how to mitigate them. Now, um, if you have a, a security team or an IT department, um, they're going to love that you have this. They're going to be excited that you're going to run it. Um, they might be running scans on your system as well, uh, but there's no scanner in the world that does as good a job as a scanner written by the company to find vulnerabilities they know about. Um, so that it's, it's, a, it's a great thing to run in addition to uh, existing continuous monitoring um, uh, techniques like, like web scans and uh, infrastructure scans. And uh, I'll go ahead and turn it back to Jeff. Give All us right. a demo on that. Thanks, Greg. Now the uh, the portal security scan again is it is installed with um, in the installation directory for portal. So I'll go to the C drive, program files, ArcGIS, portal in this case tools, and we have a security folder in here. And the only thing that's in here is the portal scan uh, Python script. And similar to the server, I need to run it from the command line. So I'll type oops, Python portalscan.py. And also similar to server, it only needs three things. It needs the machine name and a, an administrator username and password. And it generates the HTML uh, report in the same folder where uh, the script resides. And if I open that report, it looks very similar to the ArcGIS server report. And the items that it identifies are categorized uh, or sorted based on severity, with the critical ones uh, at top, then the important and the recommended ones. In this case, uh, the critical one, I've got my proxy, my internal proxy capability is unrestricted. And so that's uh, certainly marked as a critical one. It should be, um, should be addressed, if at all possible. I also have my uh, services directory enabled and that we certainly highly recommend that if, if at all possible. And some of the recommended ones, we've got the anonymous access uh, turned on and the built-in account, the, the sign-up option uh, that Greg showed previously in the slide, that's enabled in, on my system. So that was flagged here. Now, similar to the ArcGIS server security scan, we've got in our help documentation a listing of all the items that are scanned for, once again sorted by severity. Now I want to Go back here. One common thing, potentially a, a very easy uh, use case for this, is to create a Windows task that runs what I just did in the command line running this Python script. You could schedule this to run on a daily, seems a little high, but maybe perhaps a weekly basis or perhaps a monthly basis. You can work with your IT department to, to get this scheduled, and that way you've got a, a, a continuous running list of uh, reports that you can compare back and forth and I think it could be very valuable for a lot of organizations to be able to monitor some uh, security changes that happened um, that they didn't realize happened and, and uh, can be able to address them if at all possible. Okay. Ah, there we go. Okay, so some additional uh, sort of advanced options that are available both in Portal and ArcGIS Server. These are um, largely customer-driven requests and they, cover, they cut across um, all the products. Um, I guess I'll kind of briefly talk about them. So this has a lot to do with ciphers and encryption. Um, some of these things may not be of interest to <coughs> folks here, um, but if you're, in the, if you're in a federal space or if you're in a, um, 
a military space or a, uh, a very security conscious commercial space uh, like utilities or oil and gas, uh, these, are, these are real items that come up a lot. So at the 10-4 release, um, we've worked hard to increase our support or to basically add support for, uh, for TLS 1.2. So uh, prior releases, we supported up to TLS 1.0. Um, again, if, if this is kind of like Greek, um, my advice would just be to, to go to Portal 10.4 and Server 10.4 um, as just a best practice, and it'll get you kind of where you need to be. Um, now, the, the, the reality is that, um, that, T, that TLS 1.0 is, while it's still it's a legitimate way to handle encryption, um, older ciphers like SSL, um, even all the way up to SSL3, those are considered dead, they're considered weak. Um, they're now flagged as, as a security vulnerabilities by scanners. So if you're getting hounded by like your security officer or your information assurance officer to address vulnerabilities in your products, in your server, or your portal, if you move to 10.4, it'll address those vulnerabilities. Those scanners will no longer complain about um, those supporting those old um, those old uh, encryption algorithms. Now, additionally, we do um, we do now support uh, tuning the algorithms and tuning the ciphers that you use. Uh, you can disable, for example, TLS 1.0. Now, I, I really caution this action. Um, it's if you have a very aggressive patching and update uh, strategies for your for your client devices like your phones, um, your, your, your operating system, your browsers, et cetera, um, you can use TLS 1.2. But um, TLS 1.2 is not supported by uh, even currently supported browsers in some cases. And so um, I, I refer you here to a site that Esri's not affiliated with, but I use, I use it quite a bit. It's a very... Uh, it's a very uh, commonly used site for understanding and scanning and validating um, support for SSL and TLS and HTTPS called SSL Labs. And they have a really nice uh, table here. And it'll tell you if you have on the, on, the, on the right side here the user agent and whether that agent supports TLS 1.2. So this, this, you know, this might be something that your IT department would be interested in seeing or looking at. Um, you might want to talk to them, say, you know, we're interested in disabling TLS 1.0 or to only support TLS 1.2, but please tell us if we have any agents that are in this list that don't support it because they're going to stop working. So, again, if you're ag very aggressive about updating those agents, then, you know, you can go and, and actually block everything all the way to, to uh, and support only TLS 1.2, but... Uh, um, that means you're basically going to have to be on the latest version of all the browsers and all the clients. So another thing we've added support for is, um, is to adjust and alter, um, not, not just disclose, which was actually an, an issue we had before, but, but to uh, adjust and alter the cipher suites that you can use. Again, if this is kind of like a, you know, I don't know what he's talking about, then you probably don't have to worry about it. Um, but if you if you if this does ring a bell, um, it could be because again this was a this was a customer driven requirement, um, particularly military uh, federal agencies push very hard uh, for us to to be able to tune these things. A lot of people were trying to use hacks and kind of um, unsupported techniques to modify the ciphers that you can use with our products. Now you can modify these within the administrator directory. So if you go under security SSL certificates, you can see what ciphers are enabled there, and you can specifically set the ones that you, that you want. So um, if, if the word FIPS compliance rings a bell to anyone here, um, this is how you can help align to those compliance requirements, which may not support all the ciphers that we support out of the box. And uh, with that, I'll go ahead and turn it over to Jeff. He can show us how we do that. All right, and I'll just do a quick demo showing you where to access this. What uh, Greg was showing was where, how this can be done on the portal for ArcGIS side under Portal Administrator. If I log in here as the administrator and click, under, click on Security and SSL Certificates, 
This is the part that we just saw on the previous slide where it shows the protocols. The Cypher Suites is blank. That means it supports all of the ones uh, out of the box. Uh, we don't have it re restricted at all. On the server side, very similar location. Uh, the server administrator directory. Login as an administrator. Let's type that in correctly this time. And we click under security and config. And in this case, we see it right here under SSL protocols, which is blank. But blank means it's uh, TLS 1.0, 1.1, and 1.2 are all supported. And then the Cypher suites for the same, same thing. They all out of the box are supported. Now in our help documentation, well, to, to update it before I jump to that, to update them, you just click on update. And you can specify comma separated the, the protocols if you want to adjust that, or the uh, SSL Cypher suites if you want to adjust that. Uh, the syntax, uh, how they need to be input there, can be found in our help documentation. And if you're, we've got them listed right here under the SSL protocols, the default encryption algorithms. And if you're feeling very adventurous and want to know all the nitty gritty details about them, including the ID or encryption algorithms you use, hashing algorithms, whatnot, they are listed right here in our, our help documentation. Uh, describing them. But yeah, so that's something like your security officer is probably going to want to see. Your information assurance officer would be very interested in seeing that. They might even give you, hey, put these ciphers in to the field so that we only support those. And turn back. Okay. So, um, so to summarize, we've covered best practices with the ArcGIS server, with the portal for ArcGIS, and covered some some new items that we made available in the 10.4 release not the least of which is the scan tool for both Portal and ArcGIS server. And again, if you take nothing away, um, take that, because uh, that's going to give you all these best practices and more. Um, it's going to be like your personal security advisor. Uh, essentially takes uh, work uh, away from me. Thanks, Jeff, uh, for that. <laughs> uh, but that's fine. You know, There's plenty of other things I can be working on than that. So um, I use it. I use it in my own deployments. I host services for managed services. You know, we we eat our own dog food. I mean, we we use it. It's a big deal. Um, I strongly rec strongly encourage uh, exploring that. So I'd also ask you to please take our survey. Um, it's on the, it's on your uh, your smartphone in the Esri Events app. Um, you can search for the app, the uh, event, which is Arches for Server Advanced Security. And uh, give us, you know, please give us an honest review, right? If if you liked it, that's great. But if you didn't like it, tell us, you know, tell us how we can improve. Um, maybe you want me to shut up more and let him demo more or, or whatever. Um, but please, uh, please help us improve these these sessions. It's it's really we really appreciate it. There are still some additional um, security focused sessions available today. Um, later on, even though they're not, the Arches, the servers, the, the, specifically the server security um, advance and intros, this is the last of these, but um, if some of these concepts were a little alien and you're like, well, I, I saw him do this best practice technique of modifying the services directly, I don't even really know how to get there, um, that would be a good, you know, a good time to look at maybe the, um, the administration um, for like your GIS server uh, session. Um, and also, we're down at the server GIS pavilion in the expo if you have additional questions. And um, I'll go ahead and take questions this time. We have a fair amount of time to take questions if you have them. Please go ahead. Um, back when you were showing the enabling specific proxy. Yes. Uh, Is it this one? Um, back, um, back, forward, actually. forward. You have the locks on the right side. Like, uh, oh, maybe this is for uh, oh, 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 I think you're talking about this one, maybe? Yes. Like right, that. So I was in an earlier portal session where they had actually mentioned that putting all the clients to be portal was a security posture, or an advantageous security facility to accessing the server directly. If I understand well, I mean, I don't, I don't want to contradict the other advice someone provided, um, except to say that uh, th this isn't necessarily about improving security posture. It doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't weaken it, um, but it, it is necessary to support uh, 
third party authentication methods like integrated Windows authentication, PKI, smart cards, HTTP, OGC, uh, security methods. This method won't work for those, those, uh, those types of services. It just won't work. So I did understand the two correctly then? Well, I, 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 this, this is not. This is, this is indirectly hitting the server. This is directly hitting the server. You, you really, as much as possible, want to hit this. You want your clients to hit the server directly. Um, there's both performance improvements to that, um, but also, again, if you have um, more advanced security configured here, it's unlikely that this will work. And Je you know, Jeff showed that where... Um, where he tried to open the OGC secured service and it didn't, it just displayed an error, didn't, didn't run, and then he added it to trusted servers and then we went, we did this and it started working. I just want to make sure when I go back and brief on a suggested configuration, I'm suggesting the right way or the best way for... I guess I would say if you're, if you're talking about security best practices, listen to me. Okay. Um, <laughs> okay. Yeah. Any other questions? And you can take my card, and we can actually do a set. Uh, I, can, I can work with your IT department even after the fact. We can do a call or something. So, Okay. Right. Well, thank, thank you, you guys. Much. We do have cards up here if you need them. Um, oh, thank you.